Hi guys, we are here for another video for Art Joy of Sharing uh, for May 2020. Now this month, because we've all been um, staying at home uh, for the past couple of months, and if you don't know why, if you're watching this in the future, Google Spring of 2020 or just Google 2020, you'll figure it out, trust me. Um, anyway, we've all been staying home, so I've been trying new and different um, long neglected forms of creativity that I have laying around. I do still love color. I love my watercolor. In fact, my watercolor tools are on the table over there because I need to work on them this week. Um, I love lots of different kinds of art. One of the things that I do love and I always go back to and I never seem to completely get rid of is needle crafts. I started out doing my creative journey doing needle crafts and it continues to be a running theme periodically in my work. My grandmothers both on both sides were seamstresses. On my dad's side, they I am second generation American. My dad's family is from Italy and um, they all embroidered and crocheted and tatted and so hand sewed, hand stitched things and I was a kid that had trouble focusing and sitting still, and so today I would probably be diagnosed with something, but anyway, we won't go there. I digress. Um, one of the things that all of them always did was get me to do something creative because that seemed to help and seemed to help me focus. It still is true today. Um, I frequently go back to my roots and go back to stitchery. I do love fabric. I do love stitching. Lately, I've been doing what they call slow stitching. These are three of the many pieces I've made. Hey guys, so we are in um, my one of my spare rooms. This is the art reference library and the completed works library. FYI, I do have one of those. So, uh, yep, there you go. So I realize as I'm editing the clip here for our joy of sharing, I'm missing a clip. <laughs> Lately, I, I just, you know, I'm blaming it on Corona Brain, whether that's accurate or not, but I'm having issues remembering to turn on the camera. I don't know. Anyway, um, slow stitching, at least to me, is a form of fabric collage, and it's a combination of hand stitching and embroidery and beadwork, and um, I'm really enjoying it a lot. I do have, I was showing or had a, um, on the table, you saw this piece. This is one of my finished pieces, and it's worked on a piece of yellow fel uh, wool, felted wool, and it's got beadwork and trims and silk and distressed fabric. This is another one, and the base for this one is a piece of an old quilt, obviously citrus inspired, um, with some uh, beadwork and stitching and ribbon embroidery. And this is another one, and this has a piece of my machine knit embroider, uh, machine knit, holy cow, machine, machine embroidery, canvas pieces. I think I'm sold out of an Etsy shop at the moment, but I do sell them when I have them. And so this is on a piece of black uh, wool, felted wool. So I just wanted to quickly pop in here and say that, yeah, so in case for those that don't know, slow stitching is basically hand sewing. Hand sewing, embroidery, um, I add beadwork to them frequently and, um, you know, you can put yo-yos on it and you'll see when we get started on the little piece that we're going to do today. There's some really good reference, one in particular reference YouTube channel I will link in the description below for you all. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them if I can. If I can't, we'll find out what the answer is together. All right, back to the video. Okay, so generally when I get started, I have a, sort of a color theme or a design, general design in mind. So I go through my selection of materials and notions, buttons, threads, and I pick and pull things that go along with that theme. I generally don't have an idea of what I want the completed design to look like, but I usually have some sort of color theme or something in mind. So I have pulled all of these different things from my stash. I do have my scrap fabric bin. I don't know if I'll need it, but um, I have feathers and string, seashells, charms, buttons, yo-yos, a bag of um, lacy, textury trims, some distressed fabric, 
um, some fabrics in the sort of blue color th themes that I want, including one that's a fabric that I printed using my home printer with some of my artwork on it, a piece of felt for the back. So I generally like to work with something like felt or cotton batting or a piece of an old quilt or something as my back piece. I've got some um, silk ribbons and yeah, we're gonna um, speed forward through my process where I select the pieces and pin everything together. I will show that to you, but I'm gonna speed through it and I will be right back. Okay, I think that works for me, and you'll see um, that I have things mostly pinned together. I did take a still shot of this piece as it is right now in case I forget where things go, because to start the stitching process, I have to unassemble what I've done. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this one out, put it up here. I have, I picked a word to sew on here. More often than not, if you've been following me for a while, you know my work has generally got words in it somewhere. Now, sometimes how I pin things are so that I can do this without taking things completely apart. What I will do is move this pin just a little bit so that it's more like this. And I can flip the lace back, I can flip this piece back, and I can stitch this on. Then I can flip this one forward and stitch this on, then I can flip this forward and stitch this on. Got it? Okay. So we're gonna flip these back. I'm gonna grab, uh, because I don't have a wonder clip near me. Why don't I have a wonder clip? It's a little small clip. Um, hang on. All right, I've got my clips, got my reading glasses. I think we're good to go. All right, uh, I also have my tiny scissors. Um, we are going to use just a plain needle and thread to sew this on. You can use embroidery floss. You can. This is button, silk buttonhole twist. You can use ordinary thread. You could glue it together. There are some um, fabric collage artists out there that just glue things together. I like the idea of hand stitching. It's a slow meditative process for me. And um, I usually turn on some music in the background and I'm good to go. So what I will do is move this pin out of my way. I'm gonna start with just a simple running stitch. So I'm gonna go up through the back, about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch away from the edge of this fabric. I have a gray um, buttonhole twist. And then I'm gonna go about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch away from where I came up. Go back down, 
then up, then down, then up. Do it a couple times, then pull the needle. Like that. Doesn't matter if your stitches aren't perfectly even. For me, I like things to be rustic and uneven. Uh, as you notice, the, the fabrics are not hemmed. I do trim them out sometimes. I'm going to be doing um, some edging on one of my projects this week sometime. But usually I leave them just un unfinished. So just go all the way down. You could go this way. I'm choosing to go the long way. Move this pin out of the way. Try not to poke yourself. And then when I get somewhere near the end where I'm happy about ending, I'm gonna go from here from the top and I'm gonna go down out the back. So I have one row like that. I'm gonna turn my piece and I'm gonna go back up the fabric again about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch away or so. It doesn't have to be in the same spot where you ended. I, def I definitely usually like my rows to start and stop in slightly different places, but basically you're gonna do the same thing and go back the other way. So I'm going to finish that. I'll fast forward through the process and I'll be right back. Okay, so you will see that I attached our little blue piece um, after I was done with this one, and I did the same kind of runny stitch, only I just went the opposite direction between the stitches, the thread color, the thread texture, and the fabric color and texture. It just gives more interest to the background of our finished piece. Now we're gonna add the lace. I'm gonna switch up the stitches a little bit this is some more buttonhole twist. So the gray was a silk buttonhole twist, as is this one. Uh, this is another silk thread, but this is just a regular sewing thread. You don't have to use silk, use regular thread, use what you have. If all you have is one of those little travel sewing kits, that'll work. All right, so I'm gonna do a cross stitch. So I'm gonna come up here. First, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna come up here in the lower left corner. I'm gonna push the pin out of my way. Okay. 
I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch away in the upper right and go down. So I've got a slanted stitch. Then right under that stitch, where I went in, around uh, about the same line as where I came up that first time, I'm gonna come up and then I'm gonna go down. I'll make a little X, otherwise known as a cross stitch. So we're gonna attach our piece using cross stitch, our lace piece. It'll add some interesting texture to the finished piece. Your X's don't all have to match. Mine, mine generally don't. They're usually all different sizes. Once you get a couple of them in, then you can take the pin out and the fabric's not gonna go anywhere. So I'm attaching the yo-yo. I've got a few stitches in, so I'm coming up through the back, catching a little bit of the yo-yo fabric, and then going back down just outside the yo-yo, and doing these little tacking stitches about a quarter of an inch apart, all the way around the yo-yo. Bring it up to the camera, so, oops, where are we? We're gonna come up. I'm just grabbing a couple of stitches there. Yeah. And then we're going to go right here, back down. My stitches barely show. Yours can show more than mine. They can be closer together. They can be farther apart. There's no wrong way. Just get that yo-yo sewn down the fabric. Or I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to go up through the bottom again. I'm going to go down. About a quarter again quarter inch right I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch away come up through the bottom and then I'm gonna go back down where I came out on that first stitch so that we have what looks like a constant row of stitches it's called back stitch so up in the front down in the back So like running stitch, only you're filling in all the holes instead of leaving a space. You don't have to do this. You can just do a running stitch to attach it down. And of course you could do this on machine. Maybe you don't have any interest in hand sewing. Some of these little pieces would be fiddly on the machine. Um, so once again, once you have a few stitches on, take the pin out because at some point the pin just is in your way. Okay, we've got our yo-yo on, our butterfly on, our background fabrics on. Now we're gonna decide about the buttons. I'm gonna grab my needle that still has some gray thread on it. And I do think we're gonna put these buttons on. The question is, do I want them here? Or do I want them up here? I think I want them up there. So let's get this blue one on first. You don't have to be um, crazy about doing a million stitches to attach this button um, because again, we're not putting any stress on this. We're not washing it. It's not gonna hold um, anything together. But if you're doing this and the button is going to be part of the closure of the journal cover, uh, of a journal cover, then you probably wanna put more stitches than I'm doing. 
uh, this video is supposed to be about favorite things. And one of my, as I look for the hole for this button, <laughs> uh, one of my favorite things to do when I can, which I can't right now, um, is to go thrifting and antiquing for vintage sewing supplies, thread, buttons, notions, and use them for projects like this, fabric collage type projects like this, and other mixed media applications rather than buying new things. It's not only a little easier on the budget, but you get interesting things you can't find in the store anymore, like silk buttonhole twist. Okay, so that's done. Now, before we do anything else, I want to figure out where to attach this word, which I think I want to have down here in like the lower-ish right corner. And again, I have a little bit of this gray thread left, so I think we're going to use that. Okay, now you could call it quits and, and attach it to your piece of driftwood, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to get out some seed beads. Now, you don't have to do this part. You don't have to do any of this, but... Um, I think seed beads are fun to work with. They are challenging. You can use something bigger than the seed bead, of course. I'm gonna get out my supplies and I'll be right back. Okay, now this next part's definitely uh, optional to embellish your work. I know I keep saying that, but seed beads are not for everybody. Maybe you wanna add beads, but you don't quite wanna go this tiny. You don't have to. So I've selected some colors of beads that I think will go with my piece. Of course, you can see on my tray, this is a cafeteria, um, sorry, this is a cookie sheet. I usually use a cafeteria tray, but I don't actually know where it is right now. <laughs> um, this is a piece of velour fabric. It helps keep control of the seed beads so they don't go everywhere. I've got some vintage um, pearls from an old broken necklace and some different just random parts, some safety pins, some hooks, um, some new, some vintage pieces that I've sort of been working my way through as I'm doing my slow stitching. Um, every now and then I'll clean it all off and put things away. Um, but for right now, I'm leaving things on here and I'm finding that I'm occasionally going to say the pearls or something else to use. And I'm looking at this and I might use these three vintage blue, funny, funny blue beads on this piece that we're doing. That is a definite possibility, so we'll leave those out. Um, anyway, okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll go to each one of our colors of seed beads and take out a little bit of a spoonful. This is a baby spoon. And I've got some thread that's intended for beading um, and a needle that is like thinner than hair. It's difficult to thread, especially without my reading glasses on. I can't do this without my reading glasses on anymore. Um, I don't know, they should have these kind of supplies at Michael's or any other craft store near you. They can be difficult and challenging to work with, but the results I think I think are well worth it. So I'm gonna show you some basics here. So right away as I was making this, I looked and I saw I heard a bead, random bead. Okay, um, I thought I really kind of want to embellish that butterfly's body. So I'm gonna come up with my needle with my thread on it at the bottom of the butterfly's body and I'm going to grab with the needle while it's hanging like this can you see yeah I'm going to grab three or four of the darkest color of bead I have out here and I'm going to go I don't know about a quarter of an inch away the length of the three beads and I'm going to just stitch them down like that then I'm going to go back up near the top of that last bead and grab three more. I usually work with threes. I don't usually do four, but you can. It's up to you. And then pull it down. There you go. And that will enhance the butterfly's body, something like that. Now with that last one, I went a little close so that the three beads kind of bunch up to look like the butterfly's head. And then I'm gonna tie that off again. All right, I'm gonna go up through the center of my yo-yo. There we go. I'm gonna grab white 
blue. Uh, I'm gonna grab one of each, I think. There we go, and then go back down. Now some of those bead colors are gonna sink down into the yo-yo, which is fine. I'm gonna go up again. I usually do this twice inside of a yo-yo, just because sometimes the bead colors sink down in there. And you can't always see them all. There we go. So I'm gonna tie that off. And then, so I like that. I wanna put beads in the middle of the buttons too, which you can also do. So I'm gonna go up Pick a button, go up through the hole. I'm gonna pick the white, the blue, and the light gray. And then go down the adjacent hole, following the way I stitched the button. Okay, we're not done with the seed beads yet, but I was gonna put some more beads on there and then I thought, I want to do the butterfly's antenna and I want to make this a flower and put a stem on it. So we are going to do that with some embroidery. I have some gray embroidery floss here that was left over from another stitch. I'm going to come up from the bottom near the head of the butterfly. Maybe. There we go. Then I'm going to hold my thread this way. I have the sharp pointy part of the needle facing my fingers. I'm gonna wrap the thread around the needle four times. I'm gonna go up here and go down. I'm gonna kind of hold everything with my thumb. I pull and one antenna, that's called a pistol stitch. So we're gonna do another one of those. I'm gonna take another piece of the same color gray thread and I'm gonna come up down here at the bottom. And we are gonna do a back stitch. Stem up to that yo-yo. Kind of curve it a little bit. It doesn't need to be a straight line. I don't want any of them to end in the same pl place. So I'm gonna take this one up a little higher. Otherwise it ends in the same place as that one. I don't find that visually as interesting. Remembering some of my composition work from being a painter, which is one of my other favorite things. Some of those same theories and techniques apply no matter your medium. I just like creating little pieces of artwork, whether it's painting or stitching or whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, there, I'm gonna stop there. And I wanna start down here. And I'm going to take a light gray bead, a blue bead, and the big bead. There it is, as soon as I find the hole of the bead. There we go, and then a white bead. And we're gonna attach them all in a clump, like that. And we will do another one. So we will do a blue bead, and then a white bead. Now you could do all of your embellishments on here with different embroidery stitches, of course you could. 
I usually find myself doing a combination of a few embroidery stitches and some beads most of the time. Um, so I think I don't think it needs anything else. So now we have our piece of driftwood. I have some um, sort of thick cording, thin rope. Um, I do have some like feathers and things, but I don't think I want to use them. I don't think they fit on here. I mean, they would work, but I don't think that's what I want to do. So I think I'm going to just take my cording. to go through the wool through the uh, rope and out ouch without poking myself which I obviously failed at go and do at least one stitch like this and then tie it off so it hangs nicely I love that and I love the texture of the frayed rope and everything so that's slow stitching my adventures in slow stitching it's one of my favorite things there is a reason why I haven't gotten rid of over the years lots of my stitching supplies and embroidery things. And while I did purge the excess bulk at times, I did keep the majority of it. And there's a reason for that. I just love fabric and stitching and needlework. I do love paint and watercolor too, and I will always keep those also. And I'm currently mulling over in my mind Watercoloring on fabric, what would that look like? That might be some future videos. So anyway, what are the things that you love? What are your favorites? Maybe it's something you haven't done in a long time um, or at least in a while. Dig it out of the closet and give it a try. I'd love to know what it is. I'd love to have you share. Let's start a conversation over an Art Joyous Sharing. The link to everyone else's videos is in the description below and the link to the Art Joyous Sharing Facebook group is also down there. So I would love to have you share your adventures with slow stitching or what other sorts of favorite um, arts and crafts that you're up to at the moment. That's it for now. Don't forget to uh, check out the video descriptions on your favorite creators here on YouTube and also ask over in the Facebook art groups if your creators have a, a way to support the free content. Most of them do here on YouTube. We put it in the video description. Over in the Facebook art groups, you might have to ask, but we all usually have an Etsy store or an Amazon affiliate link or a PayPal tip jar or something. We would appreciate the help, so do ask if there's a way, and if you can, we would appreciate that. Um, don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe on all the videos in this hop, and um, stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and above all, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.